Praise the Lord. I don't know how clear this is going to come through, but uh, or uh, if we might not get disconnected, I'm out of my my little patio. <laughs> yeah, you see the house inside there, maybe a little bit. Yeah, my little apartment, my tent on wheels. What a day. I have been pursued by a sister <laughs> in commenting, which, you know, it's, it's, it's all part of it. It's all part of what's taking place. I see that my sister, uh, um, geez, now I want to remember her name, um, is back with a video. I was a little concerned about her for a while. Uh, what had taken place and where she went to, because it seemed to me like I haven't seen a video for a couple weeks. But uh, I'll think of her name Nancy Tibbetts. Anyway, I uh, told her it was nice to hear from her again. And uh, that's it at that. I, um, <laughs> I want to get back to the source of what I had been brought into when I first received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that the kingdom of heaven is a very real existence which we walk in when we walk in the spirit of God we are walking in the kingdom of heaven and I've shared this with you before but that in that kingdom by the transforming of the word of God by our transforming by the word of God which we take in okay spirit of Christ okay that work that transforms us I believe begins at least began for me in the altering of my natural mind so that I was capable of receiving the ingrafted word of the Spirit of God that witnessed to what was written in the literal word it also helped me to divide the word of truth into the lines and precepts which bring us into the fullness of the understanding of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Well, so <laughs> the whole issue of money and uh, material thing and especially our relationships with each other man to man woman to woman woman to man man to woman those issues and the nature of who we are okay being transformed from I remember sharing with a brother who's just recently come out, at least he's recent to me, doesn't seem to have that many videos out yet, so I don't think it's been very long. And his struggle with drugs and alcohol, and some dreams he had shared, and I had shared back with him, because the dreams had to do, I remember in part, part of the dream, and his understanding of what that dream was didn't quite, I don't, uh, let me share it as far as I can remember. It basically went like this. He says he was in this house and that <laughs> there was a step down uh, or a 
uh, step down into a living area. I don't know if you guys know how tri-level homes are built, but they have some of them are built with a higher level that you step down to, and then another level that you can go up to to a second floor. So you have a tri-level. Anyway, this living room was a step down into type living room, and in there he was hearing all sorts of strange languages being spoken, like chanting. And uh, they were taking knives and cutting, you know, and there was blood and everything else going on. Well, when I heard that, I, I immediately, you know, what I had shared with you, that when, when the Lord comes into our hearts and our lives, that candle, the light is the, of the candle, of the unlit candle of our spirit is lit, with the spirit of Christ, the spirit of truth, okay? That light that shines forth, I likened on to the type of what was mentioned of Jesus when he first rose from the dead. It says that he first descended. Now I want you to see what it's saying as far as he first descended into the lower part of the earth, okay, us. And so when I saw that step down living room, and I had listened to a video earlier and heard and listened to the struggle that he was going through and had been going through regarding these issues and the work in the will of the Father that I've come to understand that takes place for us in the lower nature. So that stepping down to that living to me was a picture of the lower nature. And in that lower nature, we are being putting we are being put to death. So there's those knives, which are really the sword or the word of truth. And the blood that is shed. It's a bloody battle. And I've shared that before. This is that bloody battle. And the fact that he heard all kinds of different uh, sounds. Or languages to me may very well have been the angels of God okay ministering to him amen Jesus in that aspect in that work so <clears throat> being worked in and worked out so I shared that with him I've shared with him twice now first that I, I uh, confess my uh, uh, struggle with alcohol and drugs and which I've been clean and sober now for five years or so and uh, hopefully to get a response from him that that we were more or less kindred spirits in a sense regarding that that perhaps it would be an encouragement to him uh, but I never got a reply back and uh, I haven't gotten a reply back on this one either the last comment I made so it's, that's how it is sometimes. But anyway, I, I wanted to uh, share that maybe with you guys so you can get a sense of where I'm coming from regarding the gospel of the kingdom of heaven versus that of the literal teachings that we receive in the cardinal mind and the practices, the religious practices, which we end up finding ourselves in bondage to okay and how being set free from those things is what the truth as we grow and mature in it actually brings us to so that what ultimately should take place in a believer's life is that as and I've shared with my sister Lynn and others is that we should mature spiritually to the point that we are able to lay this world the life our wants and desires and anything uh, that is connected to this natural realm down completely should let go of it alright and for those of you who think this happens right away uh, wham bam thank you ma'am and uh, you know poof uh, magic uh, shake and bake whatever you want to call it uh, I, I beg to differ from you. It just it, it, there is just no way that uh, you can suffer, okay, 
and go through the things needed for us to go through uh, in a pattern and a type of what Jesus went through, okay, without having it take a period of time. It's gold tried and tested in the affliction, uh, fire of affliction. Now, the fire trial, fiery trials of faith. So, we continue in this. It's a test and a trial. See if we will continue. So, for myself, there just was never, never any, any question as to turning away from it. Uh, there were periods of time of which I was in uh, being held in in the jail, <laughs> self-imposed jail. Unfortunately, that the law had to tutor me. Okay, and finally I got set free. Amen, Jesus. But uh, that in and of itself. Okay, I mean. <coughs> Every possible means by which one might be caused to stumble or fall, of which might then cause them to turn away from their faith, okay? It, it's thrown at us. It's just, it's there every day. So, praise God. Um, as most of you understand and know. So you see, when when we start to share with one another about these issues, are we thinking about what we're going to buy tomorrow for groceries? Are we thinking about what bills we need to pay to keep the food or the shelter over our heads? Are we concerned about those things as we share? Right here, right now, during this moment and this time that you're listening, are you concerned in any way about those things? Well, this is where the disconnect comes in. And this is where we were to remain disconnected. And unfortunately, we don't. Uh, I've heard a lot of people mention this before. We enter back into our bodies. Now, <laughs> I don't want you to go around thinking just that we're some like uh, disembodied spirits of some sort. <laughs> But because uh, that's not the that's not the case. As sons and daughters, first of all, as servants. Okay, this is the example being given to us, and I've shared this before, that we, in the milk of the word, as children, begin to grow. Okay, from the milk. All right, in the receiving of the baptism of the Holy Spirit by faith. Okay. Uh, we start to eat the meat, which is the uh, um, the greater understandings of our discipline or discipleship. Okay? In that discipleship, we have the law, okay, which I want you to see as natural physical, material events that take place around us. This is the outer man who's walking in this journey of faith. All right. He's also the old man who's being led by the young man, the inner man, okay, to go where he does not want to go, which is where? To death. The death of self. The natural man. The outer man. And the world and everything else in it that he participates in. This is that separation or disembodiment that I'm referring to regarding what Jesus, what was mentioned of Jesus, that he came not as a servant in the house as Moses, okay, but he came as a son over this house okay having authority over it in that sense we stay out of our bodies and rule over them 
and I believe the very nature of the circumstances that surround you which is what Jesus was showing us in very great examples in controlling the wind and the seas okay I believe they were symbolic okay he was showing us to us as in his parables he was teaching us using natural physical items of which we deal with every day plowing the field so on and so forth in parables to show us greater spiritual truths so I believe along with those teachings his walking on the water his controlling the roaring waves and the wind and everything else was a natural parable teaching of the circumstances that surround our lives okay you getting this so as sons and daughters over the house we not only control the actions of the house or reactions of the house we're no longer held by the flesh nature to serve it but to serve the Spirit of God okay in spirit and truth and not just now and then but when you when you actually come out of these bodies when when you actually become sons and daughters over this body okay you will have complete control over it there is there is no desire to want to go back which is part of the press the wine press that I've been going through at this hour because I'm amen Jesus I'm young enough okay and healthy enough amen Jesus to have continued in building in the earth I could have done that as a matter of fact it's like I say that's the wine press of what I'm going through okay because to that desire amen Jesus amen to keep myself occupied working with my hands in the natural realm all right is very strong after a lifetime of doing it okay so the press is not that is part of what might be in me to want to return and not so I'm I you know once I came out of this body as a son over the house I was led by the Spirit of God to allow all of those things to go which is what controlling the environment around me okay I have given control power over the environment around me and so will you not just of ourselves of the houses but of the environment around us and what do I mean by the environment I've shared some of it the storms and when, when we begin to accept circumstances in our lives and I've shared this with my brother sister believer some time ago regarding these what they were calling these people which is part of why we had a little bit of a disagreement for a period of time stalkers okay you hear a lot about this and then then of course you got everybody and your brother talking about aliens and all this other stuff which which is what the environment around us okay to them there is no control of the environment around them they are subject to the wind and the seas and everything else because they are still servants in the house okay as sons and daughters over the house we're not subjected to those things we're not in subjection to them they do not rule over us because we do not accept them being what they are this is what walking in faith okay is all about when you say to the mountain be thou removed now you know amen Jesus that was a natural parable regarding an obstacle in our lives something that was keeping us from getting to where we wanted to go when people accept these obstacles in their lives okay they have given power to that just as with the stalkers when you accept them you have given them the power to exist if they have no power over you you have denied them of their power 
They will not exist. They only are there to cause you to believe and to doubt the truth of the power of the kingdom of heaven which you are walking in when you walk in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And until you become trained up in that, the natural realm on the outer man is used to teach you. It's like the law. Which is really what the law is, really is. We, Amen, Jesus. Which is why it, in the fulfilling of the law, and I've shared with my sister Lynn here, I'll try not to be too long tonight, when I was sharing my sister Lynn, she had some questions about the Sabbath day, and I've gone over this several times, but it's necessary that you come to that conclusion, and that's what I tried to share with her, and wanting her to go back over the scriptures regarding what Jesus had to say about the Sabbath day, <coughs> and whether or not we, tr we serve the natural temple or the spiritual temple, where Jesus entered into the true temple, okay, and the kingdom of heaven is within us, which includes that true temple, okay, <coughs> what are we actually serving? And in the true temple, when do we celebrate the Sabbath rest? Because she was asking about the Sabbath day. Well, there's so much more involved in all of that, praise God, that we need to make ourselves aware of and that we will become in the double portion more aware of of what you will begin to understand and see exactly what I'm saying to you <coughs> that all of this trying and testing has to do with a spiritual seed walking in the natural realm coming out from the captivity of the natural realm set into the freedom and the liberty of the children of God in the spiritual realm, the kingdom of heaven. This is that work, and there's no other way other than for you to go through this process. Now, as I have mentioned, since we are coming to the end of days, actually what I believe is the beginning of the end of days, the years of days, which starts that clock back up again, Amen, Jesus, of the eleventh hour workmen and of the days of all, the ten year period, ten days, ten day, ten years, and actually I said it's a fourteen day period, fourteen year, okay, from the Feast of Trumpets to the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay. In this 14 year period, 10 of which I believe the church is actually here and involved in, the judgments of God, I don't believe she's there. And she may even have been placed in the ark into that third heaven outside of the natural realm, all right, covered in the anointed word of God, okay prior to that 10 year period. It may be as soon as six or seven years. I'm not real certain about this. What I see is a 42 month period uh, after the double portion has come upon us, after the anointing has come upon the sons and daughters, after the awakening has taken place and the division and the separating of the wheat from the tear that the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, which I am sharing with you, begins to be spread throughout the earth prior to the end. This is the work that we have to come to do. <laughs> so that's 42 months. And then we see that the likeness and the type of that, which I've shared with you, is that I believe in the natural we will also see, all right, natural Jerusalem going to war and placing her neighbors, her enemies that surround her, as we do spiritually, placing them under our feet. She does, in the natural, placing them under her feet. 
This is these two legs, the two sticks, now being joined to the body of Christ. So I believe that when this awakening takes place, that the blinders, spiritually speaking, that have been upon natural Israel, at least for the remnant that's going to be saved out, that their eyes will be opened. It happens through the revelation and the spreading of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, amen, and our placing our enemies under our feet and having power and authority over them, all right, as a witness to natural Israel, of which she sees him, the resurrected body of Christ, through us, and her heart is pierced, and she is made jealous by a foolish nation, which is, I believe, the West, this country, the believers, the body of Christ, as it rises up and comes forth with the new sinew, the new flesh, all right, gathering the wheat together from the West, going back to the East, spiritually speaking. They see this, and this is what pierces their hearts, they see the power of the cost of the kingdom of heaven being placed upon this resurrected body of believers, the body of Christ, and that's what causes them to become jealous. <clears throat> and when they do, their eyes are opened through that same revelation, spreading of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, and they repent. At least the remnant. But what do we have take place then? Well, it is said that she enters into a peace agreement. Now, I believe that's after this 42-month period, three and a half years. She enters into a peace agreement. All right? And so to me, that would be as all of our enemies, Solomon's enemies, were at peace, all right, with him when he built the temple of God. So after this 42 month period of placing the enemy under our feet spiritually just as they do in the natural then we are gathered into this barn the temple and it is established as that ark <coughs> during that next three and a half year period of which she has signed a peace treaty and it's towards the middle of the week so that's the first three and a half years gets us to the peace treaty signing in the natural and our placing our enemies under our feet in the spiritual and then the peace for three and a half years and then in the middle of the week that treaty is broken at that time at the tr time of the treaty being broken all right I believe we come into the half hour of silence in the kingdom of heaven prior to the judgments of God all right now, I don't believe it's the judgments at that time, but I believe that the footmen have already gone forth, both in the natural and the spiritual. The witnesses have, have risen. The law has gone, the law and the spirit. All right. <clears throat> Amen, Jesus. And now, the time, which, okay, now you got to remember, let me take you back real quick. It says that they rebuild their temple in the natural, and I believe they do. Where it's built at, I don't have any idea, but I believe it by rights should be on the original foundation, but it may not be, I don't know. Nonetheless, they will. <coughs> That's during that three and a half year period of time too. <clears throat> but they're at peace. But it says that they rebuild that temple during a turbulence period of time. So that makes me believe that at the end of this three and a half or 42 month period, all right, I believe beginning in at the Feast of Tabernacles or Feast of uh, Trumpets, okay, spiritually speaking for us, <laughs> as the first set of footmen and or trumpet being blown because that which was last shall be first. All right, and I've tried to help you to understand the first and the last relative to, in the Word of God, it says, 
that which is first is the natural. First the natural comes, then the spiritual. Well, when Jesus said, that which was first shall be last, and that which is last shall be first, that's that reversing now of which I'm saying that we come forth spiritually, all right, in the work of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven prior to the remnant and their work in the kingdom of heaven. They're going to be going through the natural battle of enemies around her while we're going through the spiritual battle in the kingdom of heaven of the spiritual enemy. It's after that period of time when the remnant of natural Israel has repented and entered into the kingdom of heaven, amen Jesus, that they begin their worldwide evangelic ministry. By that time, we're being gathered into the barn, okay? They're out in the ministry, praise God. But at that same time, after this next three and a half year period, I believe tribulation actually begins. The real thing of which we have major catastrophic events. Now, we're going to have the beginnings of that start to take place right now, I believe, in some economic collapse. All right? So, nonetheless, <coughs> these things are building up to this point because it's my belief still that we are gathered inside in that ark and that anointing covering prior to the tribulation. Now, whether or not we're actually still here during the tribulation okay, doesn't really make any difference because what people don't understand is that just as with natural Israel being saved out of the exodus in Egypt, all of these tribulations were coming upon the Egyptians just as they could be in a type of coming upon the world. And Israel was right there, but she was protected from them. She didn't suffer it. So in a like or type, this is exactly what could take place for us. Although they're happening around us, and what's the word say? Though 10,000 fall to the right or 1,000 to the left, not one hair on your head shall be harmed. He is, he, he's going to set up a table of feasting for us from before our enemies. So our enemies are right here. We're in a feast, spiritually speaking, of the heavenly manna, Amen. So, I just want you to try to get a hold of this so you start to understand what's actually beginning to take place. So, I've kind of gone past my little 30 minute cutoff, and I know I said before I wasn't going to worry about that, but it, a lot of it has to do with what, how much I'm giving, I'm being, how much I am sharing with you, because it doesn't do a lot of good for to, to give you too much that you're not able to take, get a grasp of hold and start to understand and see them in the scriptures yourself. So that for that reason, I, I try to keep it down. If there's a lot of content to it that I think that's enough, then that's enough. So I love you guys. The Lord be with you and bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen.